Good day students, welcome to math.surf.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over how to simplify radicals. Before we get started, let's take a look at the formula that will be guiding our problem solving process, okay? So the formula is as follows. If you have a cube root of x to the third power, this is simply going to be Okay, so this just basically helps us to see that the cube and the cube roots are inverse functions, and when they act on each other, they basically neutralize each other out. All right, so let's take a look at some examples that illustrates the connection or the interaction between the cube and the cube root. Let's do a real quick review on our cubes first. Okay, another word for cube is the third power. I'm going to take a look at integers from 1 to 5. Now let's start from 1. What is a cube? What is 1 cube of 1 to the third power? 1 cube of 1 to the third power is the same thing as multiplying 1 3 times. The power tells you how many times you multiply the, the number, okay? So in this case, 1 times 1 times 1 is simply 1. 2. What is 2 cube or 2 to the third power? 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. How about 3? What is 3 to the third power? 3 to the third power is 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 4 to the third power has 4 times itself 3 times. 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 4 is uh, 20 plus um, 40, which is 64. And then lastly, 5 to the third power. 5 to the third power is 5 times 5 times 5. Okay, 5 times 5 is 25, 25 times 5 is 125. Alright, now let's take a look at the inverse operation. Okay, the inverse operation is cube root. But something to just note is that these numbers that we um, got by cubing integers, these numbers are known as perfect cubes. Okay? So the cube of an integer results in a number called a perfect cube. There's something that's pretty neat about perfect cubes. You will see it in a second. So let's take a look at our cube roots. Another word for uh, cube roots is uh, the third root. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to have these, uh, so we're going to have the cube root function act on these perfect cubes, and let's see what happens, okay? So what is the cube root of 1? We know that we can write 1 as a product of 1 3 times, so 1 times 1 times 1, right? So this can be written as the cube root of 1 to the third power. Now when the power and the index of the radical are identical, guess what happens? They cancel each other out, and you're left with 1. Let's take a look at the second perfect cube, 8. What is the cube root of 8? If we decompose 8, um, into its prime factor decomposition form, we're going to have the cube root of 2 times 2 times 2. And then we can write this repeated multiplication of 2 3 times as the cube root of 2 to the third power. And then using this formula we introduced earlier, um, we can see the interaction here, these two cancel each other out, and we get 2 as the final answer. Now, what's the cube root of the next um, perfect cube, 27? Can you guess what it's going to be? So we're going to have the cube root of, if you break 27 down, you have 3 times 3 times 3. And this can be written as the cube root of 3 to the third power. So you're now taking the cube of a cube root. Since they're opposites or inverse functions of each other, where you compose them together, they take each other out. And you're left with 3. Okay? And then the cube root of 64. Can you guess what that's going to be? 64 is the same thing as the cube root of 4 times.
times four times four is the cube root of four to the third power, which is four. Okay? And then lastly, we have the cube root of 125. So one thing you want to keep in mind is when you're writing down the index of the radical, this is the index right here, make sure it's written in a very small font. Okay? You do not want to confuse the index with the uh, coefficient of the radical. So the coefficients are written in a big font, and then the index is written in a small font. Okay? All right, so we have three, the little three right here. Break this down. We have the cube root 125 broken down using your factor tree. It's going to be 5 times 5 times 5. Now, one thing I want you to note is that when the factors repeat three times as a product of the radical of the third um, root of the third index, these three are going to come out of the radical as just one number. They're just going to come out as five because the cube root of five to the third, let's write it down, the cube root of five to the third is simply five. Okay, so keep this in mind as we take a look at some examples. All right, so the instructions for the examples we're doing today is for us to simplify the following radical. Simplify the following radicals. All right, number one, let's say we are to find what the cube root of 16 is. Okay, so to find a cube root of 16, what we're going to do is we're going to proceed to decompose 16 into its prime factor um, decomposition form. Okay, you remember what our prime numbers are. Let's go over that again real quick. Our prime numbers are numbers that are divisible by just themselves and 1. So our prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and then the list goes on and on, okay? All right, so we're going to start from the smallest prime number that goes into the radical, the radicand. So 16 is our radicand here. Since it's even, we know that 2 goes in there evenly. 2 goes into 16 8 times. This is even. 2 goes there. 2 goes into 8 4 times. This is even. 2 goes there. 2 goes there 2 times. Now, when we were doing the square root, we were looking for pairs because the index was 2. In this case, the index of our radical is 3, which means that every 3, which represents a cube, is a perfect cube. And when you take the cube root of a perfect cube, you end up with the uh, base of that exponent. Okay? So we have 3 here. So we're going to look at this. We have this 3. Let me put that to the side. We can put that as 2 to the third. And then this 2 is just by itself. Okay? So the bottom line is we are extracting factors that show up three times. And then whichever one does not show up, like this one, shows up only once. So it's we'll keep it separate. All right? While we're keeping it separate. We're going to go ahead and take the cube root of both of them. Take the cube root of this part. And the cube root of this part right here. Now what happens is that the cube root of 2 to the cube cancel out, you left with 2, and then cube root of 2 stays behind because its power is not up to 3. Okay? So you see that these 2 times 2 times 2, which is a 2 cube, comes out of the radical as 2 because the cube root of 2 to the third or 8 is 2 and then this stays behind. Okay, so our final answer is going to uh, the cube root of 16 is going to be 2 times the cube root of 2. Okay, so there goes your final answer. Okay, let's take a look at another example. The instructions are still the same. We're to simplify. 
simplify, let's say we are to simplify the cube root of 81, x to the sixth power. Right? Let's do this one. We're going to follow the same procedure that we used earlier. We're going to decompose the radicand completely. And we'll be looking for factors that repeat three times. Okay, that's the key word there. Three times. And it's been multiplied by itself three times. Then we can take the cube root of that and it will come out as just one of the three factors. And then whichever doesn't fit that amount will stay behind um, as a radicand. Okay? All right, so 81. What goes into 81 from our set of prime numbers? So if you add the digits, 8 plus 1 is 9. 3 goes into 9, so 3 halves to go into 81. I'm not looking at 2 because this is an odd number, and 2 doesn't go into odd numbers. So we'll start with 3. 3 goes into 81 27 times. x to the 6th. 3 goes into 27, 9 x to the 6 times, 3 goes into 9, 3 x to the 6 times, so we can write this as 3 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so since the index of our radical is 3, we're going to be looking for factors that repeat themselves 3 times, and they will come out as 1. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at the factors. Um, if you look at three, we notice we have one, two, three. Those are three threes right there. This represents three to the third power or twenty-seven. Now, what is the cube root of three times three times three, or the cube root of three to the third power or twenty-seven? It's simply three. So these threes can come out of the radical symbol as a 3 because they show up 3 times. Okay. Now how about this x and x and x? Oh, we have 3 x's. x times x times x. These ones can come out of the radical as just 1 x because the cube root of x to the third is x. And then look at this. We have another set of x's 3 times multiplied by itself 3 times. Okay. So this will also come out as an x. This 3 right here shows up only once. The power is not up to 3. It's just 3 to the first power. So this will stay behind. Alrighty. Just to illustrate what we just did. Uh, 3 times 3 times 3 is 3 to the third power. We took that out. And then we have x times x times x as x to the third. And then x times x times x as x to the third. And then this 3 right here stays behind. Okay. So we take the cube root of every single one of them. When you take the cube root of a, not, of a factor that shows up 3 times, what happens? This cancels out with that. You have a 3 times. This cancels out with that. This comes out as an x. You see how they're coming out? Because they have a power of 3. This cancels out with that times x. And then this 3 stays behind because it does not have a power high enough to break out of the radical symbol. Alrighty? So what do we have? We have this 3 that came out of the 3 times 3 times 3 times this x right here that came out of x to the third and then this x. And then this 3 has a power that's too little. It's just 1 by itself, so it stays behind. Uh, cube root of 3. Okay? Well, let's simplify this. We have 3 times x times x. That's 3x squared. We have 3x squared times the cube root of 3. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the answer to question number 2. Now, how well did you master the contents of this presentation? To demonstrate mastery, we would like you to try out the following problems. Um, so what you do is you copy down the problems, pause the video, work on the problems when you're done, you reinitiate playback, and you will see what the answers are. Okay? Instructions are the same. Simplify the following. Number one. 
number one, what if you were to find the cube root of 54? Number two, the cube root of 250. Number three, what if you were to find the cube root of 48 y to the fifth power? Number four, what if you were to find the cube root of 648a to the fourth power? Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your studies of radicals, do uh, give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. We'd like to know what you think. If you have any questions or comments about the contents of this presentation, place it in the comment section below. We'll be glad to respond. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other tutorials such as this. More resources can be found at mathbuster.com. Do check it out. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.